Okay, I'm uh, Joris Kambi from uh, Popperingen, Belgium. Uh, Popperingen is the, let's say the, the main center of hop growing, and I'm a, I'm a hop grower. Uh, I'm also an organic hop grower. I am the only, let's say, professional organic hop grower from Belgium. Uh, we're growing hop. We've been growing hops for for generations, uh, as far as we can find. Uh, um, at least five generations, probably longer. Uh, it's typical of this area. So anyway, my father uh, started on the farm. The farm is a little bit behind the brewery. Uh, in '54, he took over that farm. There was a half a hectare of hops, and those were the days of uh, hand picking uh, with the hops. But he was one of the first ones uh, getting a, a hop picking machine, which was in that time very industrial revolution kind of stuff so and then he, he he moved up and then ended up let's say 15 up to 20 hectares of hops anyway um in 1993 i took over the farm and um then we had about 10 hectares of hops something like that but straight away i went to into uh, organic farming not the hops but the rest of the farm the arable land uh, but after a few years started getting more and more ideas and then I started putting the hops into transition to organic hop farming anyway so I have to keep it short a little bit <laughs> so we end up now with uh, today we have I well I have uh, 15 hectares of organic hops with eight varieties uh, who are mainly in the typical English aroma varieties like uh, Fuggles, Goldings, Challenger Woodbread Golding, these are all typical old style English aroma hops. And I have some Pilgrim and Phoenix, which are more alpha hops, eh? English style. And then I got some Cascade and a little bit of Centennial, which are American flavor hops. So that's what I do. I I'm a farmer, I'm a hop grower. That that's the way I make a living. And this brewery is the way to spend your money. You know, that's not the way to make your money. Okay. So the story about the brewing, um, let's say uh, 25, 30 years ago, just about, when we were a lot younger and uh, late in the evening at the bar, in the corner of the bar, huh? that's, that's where the bright ideas coming from. <laughs> so it was already, let's say a Sunday, early Sunday morning. Um, we were talking and bragging about, about, you know, people halfway drunk. Huh? And then the idea, I said, well, what do you think about the idea that I would start, you know, a brewery on the farm and I brew beer from my own hop. So everybody was very enthusiastic about the idea. We had a few more beers and then I don't know where. That's all I know. No. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it was a kind of an idea that, that started up. So the next week or the next couple of weeks, I said, yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea. So I started up uh, as, a, as a home brewer, you know, a little batches, 10 liters, 20 liters at a time home in the kitchen you know starting with 10 liters ending up with four or five liters and because it's one mess <laughs> and then okay uh, that was fun but uh, okay the step to a, let's say a professional brewery is something completely different but I was a hop grower and I had quite a few contacts in the, the, the brewing world huh? and uh, I contacted brewers talked to brewers whatever um, and then yeah something happened too um, now and then I was invited also in meetings in, in Ghent at the university or the research center at the, uh, whatever the name was, <laughs> um, on, on projects about hops brewing and, and, and you know, and involved with hops. Huh? They did a lot of projects. So when it was about hops, they needed a few hop growers to join that project. So anyway, the nice thing was, uh, okay, we went there, meetings, tasting beers. I didn't have that much idea about, you know, beer tasting those days. Now I do, but and then, uh, but the most interesting thing was always the after meeting. You know, then we talk with all the brewers, right? and that that was interesting. And then, uh, and I remember one brewer, I, I forgot his name, and I talked about that crazy idea that maybe one day I I, I might you know the idea of, of you know, making my own beer with my own hops in a little brewery on the farm and all that. And then he said to me, Joris, this is a you you have to do that. This is a great idea because you can tell a story that we as a brewer, we, we will never be able to tell that kind of a story. And the story is simply beautiful. 
you know that brewers are very good in selling stories. You know, they sell beer, but I think sometimes they, they, they sell stories and you get a free beer, you know, <laughs> whatever. And then, then I said, yeah, I, I didn't never look to that that way. So, okay, I got involved a little bit more, but on the other hand, the more I got, let's say, more knowledge about what it is all about, the more I realized that it's, I said, this, this is too much. I, I can't do that. It's too much. I have a farm. I got, you know, family, kids and all that and whatever. Um, I said, well, yeah, maybe one day when I retire or when the kids are bigger and they are interested, whatever. So the whole idea was put in the, in the closet a little bit. So whatever. Meanwhile, time's passing by and I, um, I also a member of the local beer club here in Popperia. We have a monthly meeting. And then Chris, at a certain moment, Chris got also a member, a new member. And uh, the president of the, the club, he said, yeah, you have to talk to Chris. He's also a home brewer. And he also has some ideas about, you know, brewing and, and do something more than brewing in the garage or in the kitchen. Um, yeah, Chris is a home brewer, but he was a little bit more, let's say, uh, he followed two years evening school in Ghent. You know, he had a degree on, on brewing. He's more, more technically, I was just, a home brewer with a few books and that was it. I have the story, the idea, the, 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 the hops, huh? okay. and uh, the location too, which is perfect. And, and he has more the skills, really technically. And uh, let's say... Um, I could make my job work. Yeah, he... Yeah, I, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, he come and join us, Chris. He, he I, I had the opportunity <laughs> to make it my job, mm -hmm. which Joris uh, couldn't because yeah. he, he has a full-time job. Yes. If I would be the brewer, we wouldn't have any hops anymore. I, he can't do both. That, that was the why I didn't start it up really. But Chris, he could, let's say, well, okay, he, could, he continue. <laughs> uh, I had a job, of course, but I wanted to work in my own brewery. Yeah. You know, and um, everything starts here with the hop farm. Without the hop farm, there is no brewery here. So mm -hmm. that's that's our thing. You no, know? we are not a, a brewery with a little bit of hops. It's, we don't have our own hops. We have our own beer. So vice versa. Yeah, it's a brewery that has a little. Brewery so when did you start up? So that air ID came when? Oh, we did, this was 2010. Yeah. When we decided, okay, we're gonna do this. Then we had to ask for permits, all stuff. So and we started up a company together in end of 2010. But the first brew we made here was. November 2011. 2011. So we will be having our 10 year anniversary this year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so you expanded your range and now you produce how much how much hectoliters a year? I mean in good times, in, a normal. In, in normal years we do 850 uh, hectoliters. That's, that's for a brewery that's not much. That's small. But where do you it's too sell? Much to drink on yourself of course. But yes. You sell uh, um, we don't drive around with our beer, so we, we use the distribution to, to shops, to uh, uh, pubs, restaurants, local shops also, but specialized beer shops also. We're now starting up a web shop ourselves. We, we sell here on the spot. People can, can come here, have a drink. So it's all the beers. local area of uh, West of Flanders and people who know you. Maybe three quarters of our beers are sold within the uh, West Flanders, Right. this province. And what would your ideal thing? You recover? How do you hope to? Yeah, what's your vision of where okay, this could go? Yeah. We need. Uh, we, we have an old building. Uh, we, as we see it, we have we have a story. We have a real story. We we, we have the hops. That's our story. But we 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 don't show it enough to the people. We want people to be able to come here, to sit here, have a drink with us, to see the hops, and be in the sun. This. this uh, this is not like this uh, right now. So we need, we need to grow a little bit more to be able to, to uh, change this building, to have a, a proper tasting room. We need a, a proper brew house. Uh, we, we've always invested in, in tanks and cooling and bottling line, but we have not uh, invested in our brew house yet. That's something we need to address also. For that, we need to grow a little bit more, but we don't want to become too big because if we are too big we cannot stay on the hop farm we have to go to the industry zone or something and that's not what we want another thing that i would like to mention is that we started this up with the two of us uh, it's a complete you got a hop farm but it's a complete separate company huh? it's, 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 it's tied up with the hop farm but on the other hand it, it's a different company 
And we're the two owners, 50% of each of us, and that's it. We own the whole thing. We have no money from wherever. Uh, let's say, well, okay, we own a little money from the bank, of course, <laughs> for investments, for, for the rest. It's ours, and we decide what we do. And since the situation is not going that well for the moment, we can keep up for a while. But if you have money from investors or whatever, or a lot more to the bank, well, that makes it a lot harder. So we can, let's say, survive. We will survive this, anyhow. So we have more control of what we do. If we want to slow down, okay, we slow down a little bit. If we want to grow, okay, then we have to go to the bank again. But we can, and the bank is willing to, because until now they were very happy with it. Well, the first time we went to the bank, they looked at us like, hmm, I don't know, <laughs> will that work? And now they're, oh yeah, no problem, you come in, and yeah, we, we have plenty of money and very cheap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit different, so that, that yeah. helps. But of course, so. be, being the only owners and doing it our way, it means we go slow and we grow yeah. slow. We don't do, we don't have salesperson running around. We don't do much things for sales. That's we don't uh, have time for it and we don't have money our, for our it. Our marketing much. strategy. Yeah. That's a good one. It doesn't the exist. Market, <laughs> our marketing strategy is that we don't have any marketing. Yeah. That's the strategy, you know. It's and and we believe that quality sells by itself. So that's what that's we what, what it's in supposed and we, to be. Anyway. Working on that. Yeah. But okay, we we, we should take care a little bit more about sales and, and, and you know but okay we, we, we got the time we, 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 we are not sales people <laughs> no we, we want to brew good beer and if you want it okay you have to come and get it but okay maybe we should push it a little bit more like the bigger guys that you know and blah 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 and, you know <laughs> could be a song if they want yeah. it come and get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so, very uh, cool guys uh, yeah. well, and I know and especially in the beginning a lot of people that I'm quite well known in, in, in around here, and a lot of people with you know having a little bit money, cash or whatever, they, they knocked on my shoulder and said, you, "You guys got a great idea. I, I'm willing to put some money into that, but we always hold it off." If we would have done that, we might have been, let's say, further already, mm -hmm. but we would have lost our who we are. You see, mm -hmm. so it's a bit you know. Which, which direction you want to go. We want to go slow and keep control of everything. That, that's, that, and still, it has to be fun. You know, it's not about making money. Although I, I should have done something different. It's about doing what <laughs> we love it, to do. Yeah, yeah it, it, it started as a hobby and it, well, to me, it, it still is a hobby. Well, for Chris, it's his job. Huh? But uh, yeah, that, that's another thing. That I had a dream and my dream was to have one day a brewery on the farm and make beer with my own house. So my dream came true. And Chris, you tell your dream. Eh? I had a dream. <laughs> my dream was to, to be able to work in my own brewery as a brewer. A full-time job as a brewer so in his own brewery. My dreams came true. So <laughs> our dreams came true. That's what we, we have, what we wish for. So, but we never said, we want to make a lot of money. No, that's no, the craft we, we spirit. You have the craft that, spirit. We, we did that's that for sure. Completely wrong. We should have put that into it as well. But we forgot about that. <laughs> See, maybe one day. Who knows? But I think yeah, one day. But, but, but we're growing, and you know, well, yeah, we. Well, now we don't make any. We made a little bit money step by step, but all the money that comes out that's goes me. back in all the time, and then keep uh, material, this, that, more cases, more bottles, Try more to improve, to improve. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so. There's, yeah, <laughs> but that, that, that's fun, that's mm -hmm. fun, that's good. Where, where do you sell your hops to? Yeah, hops is yeah, grown to brew beer with, and uh, we use, of course, our own hops, which is less than 1% <laughs> for our own brewery, so... Um, where does the rest go? I'm yeah, curious, yeah, well, which to breweries? Colleagues, to, to breweries all around, uh, I think about 70, 80 customers all together, which... Uh, Maybe half of them, one third is Belgian brewers, uh, mainly smaller brewers. Let's say I, I grow organic hops, and eh? that, that's the whole thing behind it. And, and all brewers that, that, let's say, or a lot of brewers nowadays, they have a few organic beers and they need organic hops. And then, okay, where can we find organic hops? And then they find me, and that's the way it goes. Uh, a lot of my hops go to, into France, a lot of new breweries starting up there, a lot of them starting up with organic beers 
Uh, some hops go to England, to Holland, uh, yeah, Germany, one or two, Scandinavia, one or two, Italy, Italy one or two, Incredible. one or two, but these are small quantities. Mainly it is Belgium, northern France. And a France, lot of the yeah. craft, I guess the rise of craft brewing and the interest in organic has really oh, yes, helped. Yes, yeah. yes, I must say that uh, I, ha I have a problem, with, but, but it is a positive problem. I'm always short on hops every year. Even this year with the corona, whatever, still short on hops. Brewers are still pushing me to grow more hop, but I said, no way. <laughs> and now I got 15 <laughs> hectares of hops. I'm doing fine, making some money. And I take the money and I put it in the brewery. Yeah? You know, that, that's how it works. <laughs> Recycle. And, uh, and, uh, but I'm good. I, I have work up here and I would also like to spend a bit of time here. And, and, and do more some other stuff as well. So I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 55 years old. So got 15 hectares of organic hops. Everybody can copy it, whatever. No problem. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever thought of some uh, growing some of the old Belgian hops or because there was a bit of demand? Yeah. I know Cantillon, you just showed me a bottle you were drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I talked to... Uh, These are bottles. Uh, the bottle that I showed you. This time. even a, a bottle what, was in a box, a couple boxes of beers uh -huh. that Jean, Jean Van Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talked, he yeah. came here a couple of times talking about that issue about the old Quagno variety and then uh, I ha have a few plants, still have them. One year he went here, he came here, I said, well, they visited us uh, in summertime with some Canadian brewers, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, with sour ales and all that. And uh, I, I told him that I had a few plants of Cantillon and he, he was getting wild about <laughs> it. <laughs> Quan Yu, Quan Yu, yeah, and we went to look at them and I said, yeah, it's an old variety, there's a reason why they don't grow it, it's, it's not yielding really well and all that, and I suggested to him, you can have them, there's one condition, but you have to come and pick them by hand, those uh, four binds, two plants, and indeed he showed up in September, he came to pick them by hand together with my father, we still have some pictures somewhere, and for uh, he was, you know, he was uh, his gratitude, whatever he said, he gave us a few boxes of these beers. So they're a bit older now, but they're getting better. Whatever. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> so, great. So, um, yeah, I have a few other plants. But the problem is with these old Belgian varieties, I always say there is a reason why they don't grow them anymore. Because the, the quality or the... the they are not, uh, not interesting um, for brewing or not for, uh, for yeah. growing. Yeah. And, and then they're all pests as well, I yeah. understand. They're yeah, very susceptible like to yeah. pests. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. production is quite a bit lower than the, the things we grow now. So there is a reason, okay. Uh, Brasserie de la Seine, eh? you know, uh, what's the name of the guy there? Ivan. Ivan, Ivan. Ivan de Bat has been a couple of times. He was also really wild about these old varieties. And I said, Ivan, if you really want these, I, the first thing I need minimum a half a hectare and second thing you need pay more than double otherwise I won't do it it doesn't make any sense to me you see so yeah it, it's difficult you can do it but yeah then it's just for fun but as you see I got I got more than fun enough already so <laughs> yeah a lot of people um, want to create I guess yeah. some of the older beers and understand what happened in the past and yeah the I don't think culture. it's it, Probably, yeah. the, the, these old varieties okay it's a nice story again, but for the rest, I don't think you would gain quality in your beer with that. Honestly. <laughs> now, these varieties have a lot more flavor, aroma, whatever. A lot better than, than that old stuff, but it is a nice story. Uh, you're one of how many people still doing hops, do you think? Well, um, one of the 17 left in this area. Um, then there are two hop growers, let's say original hop growers left in the area around Brussels, uh, in the, between Alost and, and Asse, eh, that area. And nowadays there are plenty of new guys here and there starting up, but until now I don't consider that as professional hop growers. I'm sorry, but my you know, idea about a hop grower is someone who has l at least one hectare of hops, a hop picking machine, a hop kiln, you know, then you're a hop grower. Not, you know, 15 vines and, and, and you pick them by hand and you throw them in a kettle, that, that's okay. You're growing hops, but you're not a hop grower. There's a difference, you see? Okay, whatever. Um, so there, we're still with 17 here in, the, in, in this area of Popperinge, which is the, always has been the biggest hop growing area. But then, the, yeah, uh, Alost, uh, Asse, uh, there used to be a lot more hops even 
let's say 100 to 300 years ago a lot more than over here but because of brussels is so close a couple things so the land is a lot more expensive that's one thing all the young guys of the farmers the the, the, the sons of the hop growers they, they they studied and they went to brussels to you know make more money than with the hop growing which was very uh volatile in pricing and all that so step by step that that disappeared almost huh? now it's a they tried to keep it up a little bit with, with, with all the nice stories but basically it's gone it's, it's finished down there here we're still with 17 we're not really well, kind of organized and yeah I, i'm the president of the belgium home growers yeah that's another thing yeah i shouldn't forget that well i doing it because nobody else was willing to do it so i said okay i'll do it that that's the only reason why so there is a an organic hop grower who is president of all you know conventional hop growers in Belgium. I think that's quite that's special. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing is that um, we are a hop growing nation, and then there is a international hop growers association or congress, whatever you know, name it. And Belgium is member of that. So all the hop growing countries in the world, or let's say the big guys like Germany and then the U.S our member and we as Belgium also are member and then every year in normal condition there are three meetings and I as a president I represent Belgium and we get contacts and, and you know about figures about acreages about you know, up and down sales uh, varieties new varieties so that that's very important so we're still member although we are the smallest member of all but they all know Belgium and one reason is of course about Belgian beers so they're still we're still kind of accepted accepted although they are we are that small <laughs> and you know the germans those are the big guys so whatever so uh okay so and why it yeah uh, another reason is uh, it got so small is because um pricing went up and down very 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 much and uh oh yeah well it's too long and too complicated to explain all that but anyway we ended up with uh there are 180 hectares in the total of Belgium. There are a few hop growers in, in uh, Wallonia. It's a, and then about 165 hectares in this area. So, and that's it. What's the total output, say, for Belgium? Well, for your farm, how much do you produce uh, a year? 15 hectares this year was uh, just a little less than 25 tons, all varieties together. And Belgium, how much does it produce? Uh, well, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I, I have papers on that, but I, it's okay. let's say an average of two ton. So 180 hectares so times two ton, 300, 350 tons, yeah. just right. about. Which, uh, let's say half of it is for the Belgian market. And even as we are so small, half of it goes abroad. It's typical, always has been that with a lot of Belgian brewers, they, they, want, they want sauce. And they want sauce from Czechoslovakia. Even if we try to grow sauce, they don't want it. Brewers are very, you know, very special people. <laughs> very conservative, I think. <laughs> I'm a brewer, so I, I, I'm a bit on both sides. So that, that's interesting. <laughs> like uh, a lot of people, they want the, the, the Styrian Golding from Slovenia, and, and, and that's it for them. They don't want anything else. Or then you have the really big brewers. They just want the cheapest uh, uh, hop fun. extract they can find. That, that's another story again, which we, we don't have an extraction plan or anything like that. So it's a combination of a lot of things, the reason why we ended up. Uh, but it, it, it's holding up now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't see it getting really big anymore. No, that's too late. And how do you supply your hops? Is it, you talked about, you know, the big brewers wanting yeah. the extracts. Is it dry hops, pellets? Do you pellets, reduce? mainly pellets, yeah. Well, all my hops are pelletized except a few customers that really want whole hops but that that's less than one percent i guess uh, since two years now i'm i have a pellet plant processing plant uh, well a little <laughs> processing plant on farm so I, I i i put all my own hops myself on farm into pellets i have complete control of the whole system until you know the bag which arrives to the brewer um, yeah, so and, and next year we'll be going even a step further. So next year, so today huh, we, we, we pick hops, we dry hops. When they're dry, uh, we make a big lot with one variety. Then we press them in, in, in hop bales, then we put them aside. And then, well, we used to then transport to a processing plant somewhere abroad in England, Germany. 
now we do it ourselves but the next thing for next year is that we, be, we will be picking hops we will be drying hops next day they cool down huh? and then the next day we make straight away we make pellets out of them so we, we skip the baling and waiting now the, the faster and the sooner and, and less uh, transition processing uh, the better for the quality so after two days of after hop picking after two days they will be in pellets vacuum packed and in cold store or delivered straight away so when we finished hop picking two days later we, we finished Palleting and let's say by the 1st of October I can deliver to the brewers which another thing is they need less stock because the fresh harvest is and, and so on and so, so brewers like it go outside sure, and sure. look at the hops or whatever you, you should come back in September yeah I'd love to when no, I will. Hops. Oh, okay yeah yeah nice no I will keep that yeah 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 I'd love to do that there, yeah yeah I'd love to see that That's well, a damn this good idea. This is an old barn. This is not really, it doesn't look really nice. It, 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 but we're getting into it, okay? If you come back next year, that should be a, a, lot, a lot different. Hopefully, if everything goes well. So, so this is just, uh, yeah, this how many, uh, what's the size of this part? This is just, well, th this is just a little, that, that was, I built this as a demonstration little field. Uh -huh. right? Uh, because well you will see the farm down there and just for you know the hop a little hop field next to the brewery um, because the hop farm is way in the back there you can take a look ah this is uh, a lot of work in, the field in front here is only five years old there wasn't any hops in here normally until five years ago and over there well you take a nice view you can see the hop farm itself. Well, the that's house the hop farm. Oh, living, that's the, then, yeah. Uh, the buildings and all that's that. That's where you yeah. are there, right? Yeah, that's where we are. And, and most of the hops are around and behind the farm. You see? Yeah, that's cool. So wow, this is, this is so amazing. Oh, and another nice story. Oh, wow. we have so many stories. <laughs> is that this building here, this, yeah. this place, this used to be a hop farm, a separate hop farm. But in 1966, huh? Uh -huh. This hop farmer, he went broke because of, well, it's a long story, several reasons, and everything was for sale. So my father lived there, and he bought this farm and, and some of the land, which was also in hops. And this building at that time was brand new. Okay? So it's over 50 years old now. So, but in the building there was a brand new, the biggest picking machine they, they built it here in this area. The, the, the biggest model and also uh on that side where the brew house is now there were four hop kilns next to each other all brand new that's one of the reasons he went broke of course he over invested anyway so my father bought the land here around and the hop fields and the building and so he picked and dried his hops until the end of 1998 well in 93 I took over the farm another five years I picked and dried all the hops in here but then we put you know it was getting old we got a new picking machine and we put a new building on the farm itself which was easier so this building was a kind of you know empty or available so and that's another reason why we started the brewery here because well there was a lot of old stuff and the old kilns you know we, we broke them down and, and the brew house is exactly where there used to be the, 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 the drying kilns for the hops so we broke them down and we started up the brewery but meanwhile the whole building has been kept uh, you know for the brewery so it, this used to be a yeah this building is because of well if there wouldn't have been any hops there wouldn't ever have been any building and this building here and, and there wouldn't ever have been any brewery and so on or whatever <laughs> and is this soil particularly good for hops does it give oh, yeah, a sure. characteristic that, that's, uh, that's one of the reason why people say why there's the hops just in one town or so close around uh, well there is a historic reason of course but also a practical technical reason is that the, the we have a sandy loam soil here which is a good soil we can grow anything vegetables whatever fruit uh, and hops and but what's special about this soil is in this area is that the water the groundwater table is higher than 
than average wife. And hops, of course, needs a lot of water. Huh? Okay, so uh, there is a historical reason as well. So now we go back to the Middle Ages. Huh? Uh, and those days, well, you can see... Oh, come over here. I'm going to show you something. Um, from here, you can see from a little bit further. You can see the tree, the towers of the three Gothic churches, right uh, there. Uh -huh. So you see that? Yes. Huh? May, I don't know why. Well, it's far I away, but, it, but yeah. okay. So that proves that in the Middle Ages, huh, these Gothic churches, they were built in the 1300s, 1400s somewhere. Proved that Poppering was a, a, a rather big town, uh, an important city, and that was due because of there was a, the uh, cloth weaving industry it was really intensive over here, just like it was in, in, in Ypres and Bruges and Ghent, Kartrick, you know, those were the big guys, and Poppering, let's say, was just behind. Yeah? But the problem was, okay, we'll move up there. The, the, the problem was that Poppering and Ypres were quite close together. And uh, Poppering and they were hard workers and they, uh, they got were bigger and, and more and more important. And the guys from Ypres, they, they didn't like it because it got too big. And then they, 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 there were some troubles between Poppering and Ypres, you know, then uh, even they got into fights and all that. Really tough stuff. <laughs> anyway, but Ypres was bigger. And they went to the Duke of Flanders, which was then the chief of the whole area. And they, uh, whatever they did or asked or told him. But anyway, there was a, a ban. Huh? And the, the, the thing was, within three hours walking distance around Ypres, nobody could do any cloth weaving except Ypres itself. And Poppering was just, just in there because it's only 12 kilometers away so that's three hours walking distance so it was uh, the, the cloth weaving was completely banned and, and and then they had some fights again up and down but at the end we lost so there was no activity there was no labor anymore for all these people and in those days the the poppering was occupied by the abbey of saint omars which is now north of france and then the, 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 the app, you know, the, from the Abbey, they say, yeah, th this is going wrong. We have to do something because people, yeah, it's poverty. And then that was the beginning as well of that they were starting to grow hops in Germany for brewing beer. That was slowly getting popular and, and known. So he sent two monks, well, that's a story anyway. <laughs> he sent two monks to Germany. Uh, with uh, you know you have to get some roots and, and you know the idea how, how to grow hops so they stayed there for all hop growing season and they came back home then the next year with, with some hop roots and then they started to plant hops which was a very labor intensive crop and that's how hops were introduced over here and, and you were the like the first area to, to do it in yeah, Belgium yeah well that's the story <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it but that's what we always have been learned how hops got here and, and it's got popular and, and, and you know the, the introduction was uh, yeah well now anyway I know people from from Ypres they tell a different story <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I tell that too? yeah sure <laughs> okay so what's the Ypres the story <laughs> is that they say is that uh, in those days the, 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 the cloth weaving no, each town they had a, a a seal, so they put a seal on the cloth, which you know, with uh, well, you know, those days they made a seal, and that proved that it was made in this town or this town with that quality, whatever. And they said in Poppering they copied the seal from Ypres, <laughs> so they used their their seal, and then you know, have, and, well, probably that, that's a little bit true that as well, I guess. So, so, uh, so that started the fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Counterfeit Ypres. Yeah, typical. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, that fight is nice still story. continuing at other yeah, goods, yeah, right? And still up to date. <laughs> Ypres and Poppering are still all oh, this not really going along. Oh, very, really? <laughs> uh, as you are from Poppering, you don't go to Ypres a lot to drink a beer or to, to go to school there. You, you don't do that. Oh, really? You don't do still that. No, these no. long living feuds. There's uh, still a little bit of friction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh,